So apparently, Waffle House costs more than Chick Fil A now. <laughs> well, you got to think about it though. So it was forty-six before tip, so it's fifty-six after tip because she was good, so I gave her ten dollars tip. But the hash brown cheese egg sausage bowl and the same version but with bacon, they're nine dollars and fifty cents each. But you get two orders of hash browns in there, and I think it was like three eggs in that joint. Maybe there's two. I don't know. And two slices of cheese and the the, the meat. <clears throat> Whereas, well, if it didn't have a tip, would it be more expensive than Chick-fil-A? Yes, it was still more expensive than Chick-fil-A because yesterday when you and I went, you and I had breakfast with um, biscuits and hash browns and I had a drink and you had water and then I ordered three more biscuits and three more hash browns to go. The total between the two was 16 and 13, so 29. 29. 29. And Waffle House was 46. 29, 46. Yep. Well, Waffle House is going to <laughs> clean up. They're going to make a killing today because the first one we went to <laughs> yeah. was packed. Yeah. I actually put a thing on Instagram, which was the picture of my coffee mug that says Waffle House. I said the only way to start this Independence Day is at a Waffle House if you're in the South. Because it's just how it works. South. With, I spell South, south with an F. S-O-U-F or North. North side, N-A-W-F. <sighs> I can't do it. Like nope. North side. But nah, the first one over there off of Friendship Row was like standing room only after we went to dunkin donuts which dunkin donuts is, i don't know what their deal is but i was just trying to get something fast and cheap you walk in it's a mess the little self-serve kiosk has a mm -hmm. error message on it and then the teenagers working behind the counter pretend like you're not even there mm -hmm. so um waffle house i guess maybe that's maybe that's why everybody but then cracker Bell next door was also packed <coughs> Slammed. Yeah. Also packed. But then you said it's because everybody's off today. Yeah, because Fourth of July, a lot of places, they're closed. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Or they have different hours. Like the Chick Fil A was the ten thirty to four today. Wasn't really sure why Chick Fil A opened late yesterday for July third. You said it was no. It's today. Oh, it's today. Today they oh, had hours okay. of ten thirty to four. Sense. But it still doesn't make sense. Why do they open late for today? It's not like there's morning fireworks. I was going to say it's because there was possibly fireworks. No. No. Today is the holiday. Because today so. is... It's not like... It's today Monday. Today is Tuesday. Tuesday. It's a big hole in the ground. Because they have, they have fireworks in in <laughs> Destin, mm -hmm. multiple places on the 3rd, too. So I was like, well, maybe... But I'm like, why does Chick-fil-A care if their little uh, teenage staff uh, stays out late with fireworks? Because for some reason, teenagers can just not sleep and be perfectly fine. Yeah, so I, I don't I, I don't know. I don't get it. Um, but either way, that joker was packed. Out, out. These gas pumps broke. That one's working. Out. One, two, three. So far, they're out. They're probably broke. <clears throat> and uh, there's just, there's no labor to fix them. I don't think there's a fuel shortage. That's the last thing that they would want would be a fuel shortage at a time when they just raised the gas tax. Well, they didn't raise it in Georgia. Ah, good point. Do you need anything? Nah, I'm good. Thank you. So, uh, I actually had to renew my car insurance just the other day before we left. And I need to go ahead and see if I can shop around and try to find a cheaper deal because originally when I switched, I switched over from, I want to say I switched over from State Farm, maybe I switched over from Progressive, I don't remember exactly, but I switched over to Geico and Geico, no I'm not a rewards member, was cheaper 
<clears throat> like they said, like 15, say 15% 15 or more on your car insurance by switching to Geico. So I switched to Geico and it was cheaper. And we haven't had any changes in our driving history or vehicles or anything like that. And then uh, this time when I go to renew, they charge me like 25% more than what I was paying before. The only saving grace was paying the entire six month premium at one time for a lump sum discount. But even then it was still more expensive than what I was paying before with no changes. Um, maybe, you know, it's just one of those games you gotta play where you continuously shop around every premium renewal to get a discount. But at the end of the day, what I'm, what I'm really seeing happening here is a rising cost, a rise in prices that is then being extended to other people in other ways. So with that being said, we are now on our way to our Airbnb for the night. And that Airbnb price is relatively high, in my opinion, in comparison to what it used to be or what it should be. And the rent was actually essentially doubled for this short-term rental based on what it showed on the website on Airbnb and then what the final total ended up being for this one night stay. <clears throat> and uh, you know, I think that even Airbnb, I think even, cause you guys know the situation that we currently face with this homeowner's insurance situation and uh, replacement costs and hurricanes and storms and all these things that these insurance companies, they wanna collect the money and the policy and the premiums to theoretically protect you against, but not pay out if there's a problem. And they're losing money. See, cause they, they want to bank on your fear that you're afraid that there'll be a problem, there'll be a fire, there'll be a hurricane, there'll be a flood or whatever it may be. But really and truly it's their fear that they'll have to pay for these claims when these problems arise and they don't wanna do that. Uh, especially with, again, these costs continuously being um, passed along to, to others. So um, I think that's also gonna translate into Airbnb, Verbo, vacation, short-term rentals, <clears throat> and long-term. As you guys had mentioned, Florida is going to be, it's gonna have a different demographic. It's, it's, the, the, the scenery is going to change because of the snowbirds uh, coming and going for the season. However, these added costs, whether it be the insurance price going up or the homeowners and investors and landlords having to pay out tens and twenties, hundreds of thousands of dollars in maintenance and repair on their homes so that their insurance companies don't, which is crazy when you think about it, um, that's only going to further drive up the prices of these rentals, these, these, these leases, these short-term and long-term rentals. So Airbnb is essentially a short-term rental. And I think that you can rent an Airbnb up to 28 days. Now you may be able to do it longer, but in comparison to like a longer term lease rental for like three, six, nine, 12, 18 months or longer, Airbnb, VRBO, uh, I think Facebook does it too. Essentially, these are short-term rentals, but the prices are going to continuously go up because all the other increased costs are then being poured in and funneled into these costs that then get passed on to the, uh, the, the renter. So here's the problem with that. The renters are going to continuously look for cheaper options or better options. They're either gonna go super cheap or they're gonna go the best value. And that will create this void in the middle for the moderately priced normal rental. So the one we're going to is not, it's anything but normal. And you guys are gonna see that because I'm gonna put a video together to show you. But if it wasn't unique and special in some way, then we would have never done it and we would have found a cheaper alternative in like a, um, a like a home two suites or maybe even a KOA. Um, but either way, I think this is theoretically the beginning of the new norm 
where we're going to see higher prices, higher fuel prices, higher food prices, higher insurance prices, higher rental prices, and more fees, more taxes, more expenses tacked on to the already crazy high cost of living that we have already experienced and have been experiencing. Look at this water jug she got. Oh, she's on this Fiji kick. She's on this Fiji kick. You got another Fiji? I did, I got the big one. So I go in and I use the bathroom, right? And then, oh, mine isn't on. How do you always have a story? I don't know. So I go to the bathroom and I come back out and I said I'm gonna get a water. So I go over, pick up the water and there's two guys that work there having a conversation. That guy that's actually walking out, they're drinking the drink in the red shirt and the khaki shorts. Dressed like he should work at Quick Trip. That's you're Quick Trip colors. Inside. You're gonna have one drink, you're gonna drink your drink, you're gonna say goodnight, and you're gonna go home. <laughs> anyway, back to my story, not your movie. Um, I go get the drink, and then I go over, and there's one person at the, at the right register ringing somebody up. There's a guy in line, and I get behind the guy in line. And a delivery driver or somebody, maybe it's this guy, some uh, a gentleman in a yellow high-vis vest went in and went to the corner and was trying to get something signed. <clears throat> I don't know which truck he was in, probably that one. Um, so they call out another person to come ring up the guy in front of me. So somebody comes out to ring up the guy in front of me, and then when that guy in front of me is done paying, he leaves, and I start to walk forward, and the, the guy who came up to ring him up just turned around and walked away and left, and I was like, all right, F me then. So I went to the self-checkout. I was like, I'm trying to keep you all employed, but if you don't want to, I'll just go over here and just, and it was a quiet system. Look, it was a quiet system. At the end, it asked if you want a receipt or not, and then I said no, but, and then I turned around and left, and I'm like, anybody could just walk over here and pretend like they rang something out and just walk away with the stuff, because none of y'all are paying attention. It just, it, well, I mean, these employees aren't vested in racetracks. Well, no, they were all under 23, So it's 24. like, if you, I mean, if you check yourself out or not, they still get paid by the hour. They don't yeah, care. that's true. That's less work they got to do, you know. <clears throat> but then, as I was saying earlier, this will just increase costs. This increase increased cost of loss and it's almost like you would think that racetrack would learn from walmart and the problems <coughs> that walmart has had with this self-checkout situation and theft and it's ultimately going to drive prices up so i actually took this picture y'all can see this i took this picture at waffle house while i was standing at the counter to pay and it says which i did not know this when we got our waffle house stuff from mother's day but it says a 10% service charge is added to all to-go orders uh, for the servers who prepare them. A 10% supply fee is added to all to-go orders for the cost of supplies. So that's a 20% addition to your to-go orders. Oh, wait. I want to know why a to-go order. Oh, because they're trying to man they're trying to build in the gratuity into the to-go. Yeah. That normally would be overlooked. And then without they're telling you that's how they're doing it. But they only did ten percent for that, but then they did ten percent for supplies because of the um, the to-go containers and the bags and the forks and the whatnots and the butters and the syrups. Except for when we went for Mother's Day, they didn't give us the butter, they didn't give us the syrup, they didn't give us the silverware. And there wasn't a sign that said that. So maybe they didn't include it because I tipped on top of that if they did this racetrack is literally like half a mile away from the other racetrack but this is this is on the gooder side gooder. um but you asked me today well uh -huh. as i told you the second airbnb we were going to rent mm -hmm. one we can't because they do not have any available check-in dates that fit our schedule. Okay. Two, it was more expensive. Three, there was a two night minimum on top of how expensive it was. And we only wanted it for one night mm -hmm. just for a stop and just for video content creation. And because it looked cool as shit. Exactly. That's the content <laughs> it creation. It looked really cool. Um, but Whoa. also the fees, the fees were really high. Yeah. So it's like, all right, it costs this much to stay, but then there's fees on and top of fees on top of fees. And one of these fees is actually the cleaning fee. Yes. And Same the, thing as a condo at the beach. And the cleaning fee still requires you to clean. The f what? Oh, uh, actually, yes. Yeah. So, if condo, you walk out of a hotel, wise, 
You walk out of a hotel, you're done. Yeah, but, but houses and condos are different. So, like in a condo, I'm assuming this, the Airbnbs are the same way. You have to um, <clears> strip washer. your bed and take all the towels and put them by the machine and load the dishwasher, clean out the refrigerator, make sure take everything the garbage is, out. Take the garbage out. And then they... Mow the lawn. <laughs> and then they charge you a fee to clean after everything's said and done. So... I was like, you know what? For those reasons, I'm out. And then, you, and, and I was like, basically, I don't agree with how they set this up. Mm-hmm. And I said, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Mm-hmm. And you said, well, if they lump these fees into the price and you didn't see it, would it be okay? I said, yeah, that'd be fine. But here's the problem with that. It then gives the illusion that the market is saying that's what a rental is worth. Right. Which then I still wouldn't rent it because it would still be too expensive, but I would feel better about it rather than feeling like, oh wow, they really are sticking it to me with these fees. I would just say, no, I don't want to pay three fifty a night to stay in this Airbnb. As opposed to as opposed to twenty five a night, sixteen a night. Yes, that ends up being three fifty a night because of the the cleaning fee. Yeah. Well, you know? no, it wasn't a one twenty five per night cleaning fee. It's a one twenty five per total cleaning fee. So even if you stayed four nights, you're still paying 120, which then you feel like you get gypped. If it's 125 to stay two nights, the cleaning fee is 125, but you stay five nights and it's still the same 125 for a cleaning fee. No, I think the cleaning fee, I don't know. I have to, I got to run it. I got to run the test and change the dates and see what it says. Uh-huh. But again, I think it comes down to Waffle House too. They're adding 20%, yeah. but how do they tell you they're adding 20%? Whereas in uh, contrast, East, East Pass. Pass tells you they're adding 20% with a, with a different story yeah. behind it. Yeah. Put my weenie in the water and pee. There's a lot of people in this river with like lawn chairs. Uh huh. And there's a lot of grilling and stuff happening. Huh. Not what I expected. No, same. A lot of kids, like super family oriented over here, it looks like. It's a local watering hole. <laughs> Literally. Yeah, like you're taking a dump. But you can't take the bridge. It, it has, it was, it's closed off. So how do you get to the other side? You gotta wade through the water? The bridge is closed. There are a lot of people. A lot of rocks too. You gotta be real careful with those little slippery rocks. Doing some the drama in. <laughs> tubing. Cherokee Veterans Park. Huh. Look at all the sassy bear. The um, solar panels. Biden's gonna block out the sun. I was about to say, you better enjoy them while you can't. Put the bicycles Fire. on the roof. Can't steal them up there. I was like, we're not gonna see any elk. And then look how cool that is. Hello, sir elk. You are beautiful. I don't know why, but I, I weirdly love it. I don't know what this is either, but this is the most gimmicky city I've ever seen in my life, and I love it. There's the Titanic. Look at that. Why is there a Titanic? Why is there whatever this is? Why was there King Kong on a building? Why was there uh, Jungle Cruise and Hatfield and McCoy's? I don't know. Oh, Hard Rock. Hey, is that Wonderworks? <gasps> There's a Wonderworks. Ah, this is yeah. awesome. So we made it from Gainesville all the way up to Tennessee. And here we are now getting coffee at Dutch Brothers. This was a kid's request. They don't have any inside service, so you have to order outside. Stand outside, wait outside, drink outside. Looks to be a very busy place, too. This line's longer than Starbucks. And the prices are just as high. But it's supposed to be some good coffee. So we'll see. I could use a pick-me-up. Do you want orange or green for the straw? Yes, I do. Look how good that looks. And this one's me. Mine looks basic. Is it hers? With 
What? Uh, crystals, 12 sack combo, 12 crystals, two fries, and drinks. I'm guessing two drinks. $25.33. Remember you could go there and get 12 crystals for like... Well, here we are. This is our, this is, this is it. This is where we're staying for tonight. Or not. We're a long way from the beach of Destin. Are we going to get any sleep with this rooster over here? Put the keys in the door. I like the door. Get a Recaro seat. <laughs> oh, okay. She said, oh, okay. She's probably going to be like a bus bus. Oh, hey. Oh, wow. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, does it have a Recaro seat? It has a Recaro seat. That's what I said. This is so cute. Oh, that's beautiful. 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 Oh, that